Ich will ja. Oh, du musst du reden. Ja, das ist klar. Das ist klar. Das ist klar, aber ein Zähl. Hey everybody, Chad Cruz here with Health and Home Center. I'm here with my good friend Andy Weaver. Andy grew up in the Amish community and he's going to show us today how to plow the old-fashioned way. Andy, how long do you think you've been plowing personally? Uh, about 32 years. 32 years. And, and how old are you? 38. Okay, so almost your whole life. Yes. I, I mean, at least, you know, most of his life he's been plowing this way. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your team here. I'm gonna show you our team here. We got Barney on your right. He's about 18 years old. He's been here almost his whole life. He has a real good reputation here. We love the horse. He's been very, just, he's not only a pet, he's a very faithful worker and just a very friendly horse. Uh, he's a Belgian. And then you got Max. Max is a Percheron Standard Bread mix. Uh, he's a little feisty horse and uh, he's about 10 years old and then you got Ma or Belle. I always call her Molly because we used to have a Molly but her name is Belle. She's six years old and if you notice she's blind in this eye. I'm not, I'm not sure why. I just got her recently but she's blind in that eye which makes it a little hard for her to work on this side but the way I plow she has to be on this side because I need that horse to, to walk in the furrow. He's trained for it. So she needs to, to be on this side, but it makes it hard for her because she can't see the other horses. And so you'll notice in the, when I'm plowing, especially at first, she kind of wanders back and forth because she's trying to get a, the feel. This is called a chalky stick, and she'll kind of get to feel why the chalky stick where the other horses are. So that's my team. She's, uh, she's having a baby here in about a month. I'll be able to work her all, all the way up until she's She's uh, giving birth, basically, and then after she gives birth, I gotta, I'm going to have to give her about a two-week break. Uh, but I have a small farm, so the horses don't work very hard. <laughs> they get away with, they, they get out of shape in the wintertime, especially. Well, these are my faithful horses. So since we are just kind of plowing a thin strip, a narrow strip, it's a garden, we're just going to be plowing one way and, and driving back empty. So it's going to take twice as long to get as much done, but you'll know that, you'll see that it goes pretty fast anyways. Yeah, on a typical, if you were doing a large field, you just go both ways. Yes, you feet. plow down the feet, field and you plow back. Okay. And so, so it's twice yeah. as fast that Oh way. yeah, twice as fast. Okay. So we're looking at the plow. This is the Pioneer plow made by the Amish. And if you see, if you look at it, the plow, you know, obviously wouldn't plow because it's not even hitting the ground. That is what these levers are for. This one on the left adjusts the wheel a little bit in case that this is not running in the, in the furrow the way it's supposed to be. But, and then this one adjusts this wheel. This wheel, if I put this one up, you see, it looks like it's falling over because this wheel is coming up. So it's, so it's dropping the plow down. And this one, this one drops this wheel up. So, or brings this wheel up or, or drops the plow down, I should say. And that's what makes a plow. So you see the plow goes down and you can go all the way up. If you keep going, you can go a foot deep and the horses don't like it one if you go one groove to the next groove it makes a difference you drop another probably three quarter or to a inch to an inch so that's how you plow if you yeah if you put these all the way up which i never do that it would stall them they could never pull it so that's what you got simple old horse drawn plow
So what you're looking at is a Pioneer brand plow. Uh, they used to make the old Ford plows. I don't know if they do anymore, but uh, you know these plows are still horse-drawn plows, but they've come a long ways from what they were originally. Uh, like the old Ford, they were they were not nearly as good as the plow. They were just old old Fords. Um, this is a Pioneer. They're soil masters. They've come out with new brands that were dramatically improved. They pull easier. They plow better and everything. Uh, but this is an older plow. You know, it's actually really, it's really impressive how fast you can do that. I mean, you did this whole thing in about maybe an hour, maybe? Yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. And yeah, we had a little trouble too, because I got a heavy layer of mulch on there. And it was making some trouble of plucking up, clocking up my plow. But it went pretty well. Yeah, the horses took it took them a few minutes to kind of warm up and get used to each other, but yeah, it was good. And what what are you going to be planting here? Potatoes. Okay. Yep. Right. So we expect if they do well, we should get that's about probably a quarter acre. We should get at least a thousand pounds of uh, potatoes if if uh, they do well. Okay. And if will will that do you have to do any more potatoes, or is that for your family that that'll do? That's it. That'll do. Okay. Yep. And so. That'll get you through the winter into next spring or next. In, yes. Will it get you to the next season? Yes, or? it should. Because okay. last year we had 1,500 pounds and we still have 500 pounds left. Is I'm that sure. right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Even though we've had anything potato you can imagine on the table, you know, uh -huh. soups and all kinds of stuff. And but yeah, potatoes. Potato is it's a great thing to grow because they're heirloom and you can keep your seeds and go on forever and they're easy to grow and. You can make so many different things out of potatoes. You can, they and they always taste good. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Now that it's plowed, what, what will come next out here? So I'll leave it lay for a few days until it dries out a little bit, and I'll take a drag over it or a spike tooth harrow and kind of pull it down and, and even it out, and then leave it lay for a couple more weeks, and then I'll take the spring tooth harrow in and kind of uh, cultivate through it. And and then, yeah, it's just I just, since it's, there's no rush with it, I'll be going back every two weeks or so and hitting it a little bit and then we get some rain it'll break down because right now it's pretty chunky okay. it'll break down and by the time we're ready to plant we probably won't plant until June sometime gotcha and okay. then it'll be real nice nice and ready to go nice now you have you, you put manure on top before yes. before we plowed yes and the when do you when did you put down the manure before I put it down around uh, I don't know two months ago okay and that's not very important not no, to me it's not important yeah. when you put that on now so we put the manure on there and leave it set for a while and then we plow it and then that's all it gets okay. we don't put any more fertilizer on it because okay. that should do it and granted it's been it's been a field for many years and it's, it's gotten a lot of manure over the years or mulch okay uh, we've just turned it into a garden in recent years so but it's pretty productive. Do you think it gets better over the years as you continue to add manure? Oh, definitely. It, so it if you work it and, and put manure on it, oh yeah, it definitely gets better. Uh, I think one issue we've had here was a little lack of drainage, okay. and that's your enemy. I mean, that's just hands down your enemy. Yeah. And so other than that, it's, it's a very productive uh, piece of ground. And the drainage, the lack of drainage is mostly because of the clay in the soil? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I, if you notice, I, I plow pretty deep because that helps the water. you got more loose ground. So if it does rain, the water can get away from the roots of the plant oh, nice. a little more. So. Oh, wow. Well, Andy, you know, my wife and I, we always enjoy coming and seeing you, your family, your wife, your beautiful eight children. We just well, we love being with you guys. It's mutual. We love when you guys come. That's why we invite you. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, you Jay. Much. God bless you. Guys. Thank you, Andy. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, hit the like button. Uh, if you have any comments, share down below. God bless and have a fantastic day.